Okay, this is Pondless Waterfalls 101. If you've looked at a bubbling water feature and had no clue how it was made or how it worked, this is the video for you. Before we jump in, chapters for this video are gonna be in the timeline down below if you wanna skip around and real life examples of what we talk about will pop up in the top right hand corner. So right off the bat, we're covering Pondless Waterfalls. Why are they called that? Because there's no pond. And that might sound elementary, but that is a very large difference. So I'm gonna cover the very basics first, and then maybe we'll expound upon that and give you some other ideas. So every pondless waterfall needs at least these four elements. You need a tub or some kind of pond liner to hold the water. You need a rock or whatever material you're making your waterfall with. You need a pump with pipe. And of course, you need water. Now some of these come with other elements you'll end up needing, like if you use a liner instead of a tub, you might want some kind of cloth to protect the liner. If you're not using rock for your waterfall, you may need some kind of feature, some sort of statue to run water over, and some kind of structure, box or block, to hold this rock up out of the void, and we'll explain that now. So I'm gonna build one of these here from scratch, and then we'll break it down and explain the various parts. So from ground level, you've put in your pond liner or your tub, whichever one you have. Within this tub, you have your blocks to create a void and your pump with the pipe you need for it. On top of this is your stone and your feature, which can be a big ceramic pot or a concrete structure you make yourself, or some rocks you've stacked up. Then with your pipe, this runs beneath the rock up into your fountain, and the water spills over the top. So this is the very basic form we are going for, and let's break this down. So, crucial element to a pondless waterfall, because there is no pond, you still need water volume. So where do you get that water volume? That's what this void is for. So these blocks are a crucial element to the feature. Now, if you have the money, I would recommend the aqua blocks or void boxes. You can find them on Aquascape's website or I've seen them on Amazon, I believe. You might be able to find them at a hardware store. These are those cube shaped blocks that have the plastic grid pattern or triangular pattern so that they're, they're porous they have holes in them that allows the water flow but does not allow the rock to fall through and that keeps your rock on the surface and the water beneath so that you can have mass amounts of water in an open space beneath your fountain and that's where all the water comes from so these are down here now, if these become expensive, I have used cinder block to fill that void because cinder block has more open space than if you were to just dump a ton of river rock in there and cinder block are cheap. On top of cinder block, I have put plywood because plywood, if it's fully submerged, decays very, very slow. This comes with its own maintenance problems. In one instance, I was able to take a large old tub that I could not use for the liner, and I was able to use that tub to cover the cinder block and create that void for the water. So this is the DIY option that comes with more maintenance involved and is certainly not as effective as the money option, which is to just buy the boxes on the internet or at your hardware store and piece them together and then you don't have to worry about all this nonsense. If you just fill the hole with rock, you will not have enough water volume because there's rock in the way, so you would have to constantly be refilling it or have an enormous hole because there's no way you would have enough water to keep this and not lose it from evaporation. Now, if you're not using a pond liner and you are looking to get a tub, I have used tubs that have a dipped in roof or lid on them that sort of works as a bowl with slits in it so that the water flows through the roof of the tub and your rock can sit on top of that and it's all one piece, you buy it whole. And these are very handy, but these are not as customizable to various shapes. And I believe these are much more expensive than the pond liner. But if you don't wanna mess with the boxes and the pond liner, and you just wanna buy a tub that has a roof with slits in it and install that, 
this is certainly an easy option. So if you're going to use a pond liner, you need to protect this pond liner from punctures. So within your hole, you're going to want to do a layer of cloth, some kind of road cloth or weed, a thick weed cloth, or even like an old used rug or carpet, because you don't want digger squirrels or rodents or gophers or rock to puncture under your liner, especially when there's lots of weight from the top side. Then down goes your liner. On top of your liner is more of that cloth because you don't want the corners of those block to puncture or a large stone to puncture. You want your thick cloth on top of the liner everywhere that you think there might be some external force that can puncture through it. You have your cloth and then your pond liner and then more cloth. You want your pond liner to go out beyond the hole because if it's cut back in here, erosion or just the dirt settling over time could drop your liner down and cause a leak on the side. So you want excess liner to stick out past the edge of the hole. So if you have a two foot deep hole that's six feet across, that's 10 feet of surface area on the inside of the hole. So you want a pond liner that is more than 10 feet long. You set your block in and your pump. Now, it's most efficient if your pump is at the lowest point of the water fountain. So if this is all level, you might want to dig an extra little dip on one end of it so that your pump can sit in there so that all the water, if it gets really low, your pump can still get the last remaining water until you're able to fill it again. So the pump is going over here. Now, what do you do with your pump? Simplest way to do it, and I've done it, just get a, find a flat piece of rock you're working with and just stick it over the top of where the pump goes. That way you don't have to dump a ton of river rock down there and if you ever need to get to it, you can just lift, slide, or tip that rock out of the way and you can get to your pump. Now, if that's a hassle and you don't wanna have to keep reaching down there and pulling river rock out, the same company that makes these blocks will likely make a box to put your pump in with a hole the hose can go through and a lid on it so you can access your pump. That is certainly an option. Another option that's more available to you is if you go to a hardware store and go to the irrigation section, you can get one of those irrigation boxes. The plumbing ones are green, the electrical ones are black, and they have a lid on them, and usually a little hole down here for the pipe on either end, and if you, that's not enough hole for the pipe to go through, you can cut a larger hole in it, and you can stick this over the top of your pump so that you have a lid here, and then you can put your river rock on that. Now, if you ever need to access this, you can just take the rock off and you have a lid that leads directly down to where your pump is. So let's briefly explain pipe. I have done a full video on this, but to go over it again, most of these pumps come with threaded or barbed slip fittings. So it comes out of the box with a threaded fitting that goes into the pump and off of that fitting is this barbed piece. And there's usually multiple sizes. So if you're looking to use a one inch pipe or a three inch pipe, depending on the size of your pump, they usually come with various sizes. So your hose presses down onto this slip fitting and those barbs catch on the inside of the pipe and then you're able to thread your pump directly onto that. Pumps also usually have some kind of grate on them. It's not so much a filter as it is just a screen to keep large debris out. So if you have a pump here with your hose coming off the top, there's usually a grate here that if you pinch, you can pull it off or twist and pull off and that will keep larger debris out of your pump so that pebbles don't fall down and get ground into the pump and break the blades in it. It will still allow leaves and some debris and algae through the pump. So if you're worried about that, you can get a filter for it. But with these submersible ones, most of the debris gets caught by the rock on the surface and if anything gets down in there, this screen built onto the pump is, at least in my experience, enough to keep the pump from going bad and getting really jammed up. But if you ever need to lift this lid, you reach down, you can unscrew it if you need from the hose because there's a fitting, and then you pop off this screen and you can hose out with your garden hose and get any debris that's been built up in the slits on that screen that your pump comes with. So you have your void boxes set and your pump is at least lined out, ready to go, maybe not hooked up yet, because you haven't, you don't have anything to hook it up yet to. So the top structure can be really basic. If you just wanna get a big ceramic pot and take a flex pipe up through the middle and just glue it really good, or get one that fits perfectly into the bottom of a ceramic pot, 
that can be it. That can be your water feature. And then the, the pipe comes into the bottom here and you've glued it there. And when this fills with water, it'll overflow, go back down into this void where you have it full of water and the pump will continue to just recycle that through the pot. If you don't want to use a pot, say you made a concrete structure from some video you saw on YouTube and you have this here. Then you have followed the instructions in that video and you know that there is already a pipe that goes through the feature and you just hook the hose up from the pump to the bottom of that feature and this sits on top of those void boxes or those aqua blocks or the cinder block or whatever you have in there to hold the, all the weight up. If you're looking to use only stone, you can get a stone drill bit from a hardware store, stack up your rock, and probably one at a time, drill your hole through the rock. Then you can take your flex pipe. If you get a size that matches the size of the drill bit, you can just stick that up into the rock as far as you can. If you want to seal it, I suppose you could use some kind of foam sealant. But in my experience, if the pipe is the same size as the drill bit, they fit perfectly. And there's not enough downward pressure to make that leak. At least not enough to worry about it. If you don't want to get a drill bit and you don't have big stone, you can buy these pre-drilled at most garden stores. So if you have a store in your area that sells pond supplies and landscaping supplies, they might sell boulders that have holes drilled through them. And they may even sell a kit that has all of this in it. So then you just hook your pipe up to the rock and water comes out of the top of the rock. So that is the elaborate way to explain this. So let's go one step bigger. Let's say that you don't just have one structure you want to pump water over. What if you want something that looks a little more like a creek? What if you want some real water flow? The structure does not have to be over the void. You will always need the void because that's what holds the water. If you're not going to have a pond, you need something that holds water. But if you have a slope, and you're looking to do more of a creek. The concept is all the same, it just needs to be expanded. You dig near the bottom where the water is going to end, and you have your pond liner here with your void. There's your void to hold the water, but you want more of a stream or a series of waterfalls. So your liner is just going to keep coming up this slope, and your water is going to start here. If this is 12 feet and this is 10 feet and your liner doesn't reach that far you can use two liners it's a little risky if they separate it all but if you have good slope here this top liner can go over the top and overlap the water level at the bottom is only going to be here so there's no chance that this flows uphill underneath that top liner if you have plenty of overlap so then from here, you set your rock in, and you set your rock in, then from your pump, this comes out. You can dig it through the ground underneath or beside the pond liner, and this is where your water comes out right here, and then it, over, it fills over this rock and cascades, and then it fills over this rock and cascades, and then it fills over this rock and cascades. And that's how you end up with a series of waterfalls that ends at a basin where there is no pond. Okay, side note here because I've ran into this problem before. This is a cross section looking down your stream. Make sure that the sides of your creek bed are high enough to not let water overflow and give yourself extra. Because when you end up putting rock in here for a rapid or a waterfall, if the rock comes up above the pond liner, when the water hits these rocks, it will just flow out over the side where it leaks into the rest of your yard or your garden or down the hill and you lose all your water and you'll come out the next day and be like, where's the water going? You lost it, it's gone. So make sure that before you put rock in, you know how big they are and you can bring the sides of your creek up accordingly so that water flow goes over the top of your rock and not outside the edges of the creek. And then you can just cover that liner with more stone. 
And a pro tip, because I did this once and it worked, if you have your, your blocks in here and you want to get a little more water flow to the end, but you because you know it's just going to disappear down here, you can put a little extra pond liner on top of this block so that when the water gets down to the void, it sort of flows to the end of the void before disappearing through the rock. That way the stream just sort of fades out at the end and doesn't all just disappear at one point. If you're doing something of this scale, these rocks can be concreted in. You set them in place and then concrete behind them and that allows the water to flow over the top because if you don't seal them somehow, the water will just flow beneath the rocks or around the rocks and you want the water to go over the top so you can use concrete. Another easy solution is the pond foam. It's just a spray expanding foam that comes in a can. You can buy that at a hardware store or online and that's used essentially how would you would use concrete. You just set your rocks in and then you spray foam down in there and the spray foam can actually be carved back out of the way where you can't see it. And then in the end, the concrete or the foam is all just covered with river rock. I've had people ask, how do you make it look natural? And I have a rule of thumb that I try to follow when I'm making these. So question, why is rock in a river round? because it gets tumbled. So when the earth decays from the water flow and rock breaks off from the mountainside, it gets tumbled downstream with boulders that, go, that become round, that become smaller, until eventually you get just sand, which is why you can find river rock of all different sizes in a creek. Now here's a challenge. Google natural waterfalls. Go look at any waterfall picture on the internet and tell me, is it round? Like, is it made of round river rock? And the answer is no. Every waterfall face you're gonna see is gonna have bit long, smooth shales of rock. And it might be multiple pieces, but it's not gonna be a ton of river rock stacked on top of each other. Those rock have been washed off the waterfall. They're now down in the bottom in the river. So if you're gonna build a waterfall of your own, you don't want your waterfall to be a series of round rocks stacked on top of each other and concreted in. Because when the water flows over the top of this, it's gonna look like a man stacked those rocks there. And you're always gonna look at it and go, why does that not look natural? It's because nowhere in nature is a waterfall made up of river rock that's been stacked up on top of itself. So if you're working with pebbles and small, perfectly round boulders, they go down over the reservoir or they go between the falls where the water just flows. If you're making something that's got white water and you've got more than six inches of drop, a good rule of thumb is to find your bigger rocks that are much more square so that when the water flows over the top of it, it looks like something you might've seen in nature. Then you have your river rock down below that has theoretically been washed off of this hillside and has tumbled down the river and that's why it's round. So that is Pondless Waterfalls. Some questions I've received on other videos. Where does the water come from? Your garden hose. Once it's in the basin it just recirculates that same water and you shouldn't have to refill it until you lose some from splashing or evaporation. So how frequently do you have to refill it? Well, that all depends entirely on how big your reservoir is. If you dug a six foot deep hole, you might not have to refill it like ever. You just let the rain fill it every winter. If your foot is only six inches deep, you'll probably be filling it every three days. So keep that in mind when you're digging your hole and buying your liner or your basin. The bigger the hole, the less frequently you will have to refill it. How big does the pump need to be? That also depends on how big your feature is. So most websites you look to buy a pump have a chart on it that tells you how far up the pump can lift and how much volume the pump puts out at various heights. So you can just measure from the bottom of your reservoir to the top of your feature and if it's six feet, go look for a pump that puts out a few hundred gallons at a max height of say 12 feet and you know that six feet is well within 12 feet and if you need to dial it down you can and you can pick a pump according to that. I get these supplies at thrift stores and Home Depot and Amazon 
You can also buy these in full kits at a store locally or on a website like Amazon or Aquascape's website or any other various pond supply companies. These features are very customizable and they can be built to any size, whether you want a five gallon one on the edge of your porch or a 500 gallon one that takes up half of your yard. They follow all the same concepts I just explained. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you wanna watch me make features like this, I've put them all in a playlist on my channel and you can subscribe to my channel to see whatever else I make in the future. If I didn't cover anything or you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll respond to as many as I see. Peace.